buffers. A buffer is a solution that can resist pH change upon the addition of acid or a base. It is able to neutralize small amounts of added strong acid or base, thus maintaining the pH of the solution relatively stable. A buffer is generally made between a weak acid and its conjugate base. Or we can have a conjugate base or a base, a weak base and its conjugate acid. Notice in this solution, these are our water molecules and we have some acid molecules and we have some conjugate base ions floating around. Notice that we have both the acid and the conjugate base in solution along with the rest of the water molecules. The acid and the conjugate base are going to react with any added acid or base to the solution. Here we're going to take a look at a representative buffer, the phosphate buffer, where we have phosphoric acid plus its conjugate base. Now notice that the conjugate base is as a compound. We can't, there's no such thing as ions that we can purchase in solution or in solid form. We have to have salts. So this is actually the salt of the conjugate base. Okay? So in solution, what we have here is our acid. So notice that what we have here, we have an aqueous solution here, right? We've got our aqueous solution that contains acid molecules and conjugate base molecules in solution. The sodium ions are floating around in solution, but they do not, they do not um, play any role in the buffer itself. So, we've got acid and conjugate base in our solution, just like we have in our schematic over here. Now, if I add in some base, it is going to react with the weak acid, and in doing so, when it reacts, with the weak acid, it is going to produce more conjugate base. Producing more conjugate base only increases the pH slightly. It's very negligible, so the pH does not go up. If I add in strong acid or acid that's going to release this hydrogen ions in solution, it's going to react with my conjugate base. When it reacts with conjugate base, it produces more weak acid in solution. And when I produce this weak acid in solution, the pH goes down slightly negligible, so it does not change the pH by any large amount. So a very good buffer is going to be, remember, uh, weak acid and it's the salt of the conjugate base. Now we can have different types of buffers in which we have a base plus a strong acid. How does that form? Um, more of the conjugate acids, such as, let's say we have um, NaOH. 
Notice we have to have salts of bases. We cannot have just random base. Let's say we have this and we mix it with a strong acid. When I react my weak base with my strong acid, you'll end up with conjugate acid plus NaCl. Remember, these are just ions floating around in solution. And so what do we have here? Essentially, this is what we have as our product, as our um, reactants, right? Because this is an aqueous solution, right? That sodium is a spectator ion. So what do we have? I've got weak base, and I've got my conjugate acid. So I have a buffer. Remember though, that the concentration of the base has to be much larger than the strong acid because remember, they don't disassociate as well as strong acids. We can also have a weak acid and a strong base. And we end up with our conjugate base and water. So notice we've got our weak acid and its conjugate base. Okay. Did you notice something on this slide? That H2PO4 minus can act as an acid or a base. What did we say that this was called before in a previous video? It's an amphoteric species because it can act as an acid or a base. If it's in the presence of a stronger acid, it will act as a base. If it's in the presence of a stronger base, it will act as an acid. Here, we're going to practice looking at uh, buffer solutions. Uh, we're going to look at these acid and base pairs to determine if a buffer can be made if we have a one-to-one -one mole ratio of acid to base. Let's quickly write some notes before we begin. If we have a buffer with a weak acid and its conjugate base, the concentration of the weak acid should be equal to the concentration of the base. If I have a weak acid and a strong base, then the concentration of that weak acid must be much greater than the strong base. If I have a weak base, then its concentration must be much stronger or much higher than the concentration of the strong acid that is making up our buffer. Okay? So pause the video, take a moment, see which of these can be made into a buffer in a one-to-one -one mole ratio, and we'll come back with the answers. Let's take a look at number one. Number one, we have HF, which is a weak acid, and KF, which is the salt of our conjugate base. And if we had one mole to one mole, that would make a very good buffer. Here we have methylamine. Our nitrogen is saturated with all of its hydrogens. So this is actually acting as our weak acid. And notice here that our conjugate base is the salt of the conjugate base. And if we had a one-to-one -one ratio, we would have a buffer. Let's take a look at the third one. 
We've got strong base, strong acid. We cannot make a buffer. The reason being is that you have to have a little bit of acid and a little bit of base so that you can um, neutralize any acid or base that's added. Using these, we have nothing but hydroxide and um, hydronium ion present, and we cannot make a buffer with this solution. Here we have a strong base, strong base and a weak acid. We could make a buffer only if I had way more weak acid. So since I'm looking at a one to mole ratio, one to one mole ratio, this will not work. Number five is very similar to number three, where we have a strong acid and a strong base, and we cannot make a buffer with a strong acid and a strong base. Number six, we have a, we've got the salt of a base, and we've got a base. So we've got two bases. We cannot make a buffer with two bases. All right, the last one now, we've got, we've got two salts. We've got two salts, but notice one has one extra hydrogen than the other. So here we have a weak base, I'm sorry, a weak acid. And here we have the conjugate base. And because they're the same, we have the base and the conjugate, I mean the weak acid and the conjugate. If we have both of these together, we can have a one-to-one -one mole ratio buffer. Okay. Here we are looking to find out which of these solutions can be used to make a carbonate buffer. You go ahead and think about which one of these would be used to make a carbonate buffer based on the information we had on the previous slide. And I will come back and you can check your answer. Okay, hopefully you picked letter choice C. And let's take a look why. For the first one, we've got 0.05 moles of my conjugate base and 0.05 moles of strong acid. Well, they're equal concentrations and we have to have more of our more of our base than acid. So A is not able, able to be a carbonate buffer. If I look at B, I've got 0.02 moles of bicarbonate and I've got 0.05 moles of HCl. Uh, once again, I've got way too much acid based on the amount of base that I have. So that can't be a buffer. D uh, can't be considered a, buff a buffer either because CO3 minus two and OH minus are both bases. So we won't really end up with a buffer because there's no acid and a base. So C is the only one that could make a carbonate buffer because we have less strong base than we do our weak acid. 